Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. Today we'll be learning how to paint metallic surfaces with watercolor without any sparkly paints. Thanks for parking your brushes here and let the epic painting adventures begin. By the way, since Patreon is pretty annoying to search for past posts, I've recently created a complete public index of all my posts with links divided by category. Currently that's more than 200 posts. And if you're one of my patrons, then this index, which I'll continue to update, is going to be easy access to all my posts in one place, so check it out. Even if you're not my patron, you can scroll through this index and see what sort of stuff I post on Patreon. And there are more than 50 free posts, among the 200 total, that anyone can read. As usual, a public post with information from this video will be up on my Patreon, and my sketch and reference downloads and other private info-dense posts will also be waiting for patrons only. I'll be using my Schwinko watercolor pans on Arches hot press paper for this original painting. I'm working in a monochromatic color scheme of various yellows to effect an illusion of a metallic gold surface without using any sparkly paints or metal leaf. The colors I use are lemon yellow, oriolan yellow, some leftover Indian yellow in my palette, transparent brown, and a sepia. Notice that I chose warmer and cooler yellows and also a warmer and cooler earth tone for, for temperature variation. I also use browns to extend the value range and not black to darken the yellows. Black has a cool bluish temperature and it would have resulted in some pretty boring and also muddyish dark yellows, and also made those darker yellow mixes greenish in hue, which is not an effect I want. So I'm using the warmer browns for cleaner dark value mixes. There's obviously more to this piece than just the golden slipper, but I'll be focusing on just the metallic part in this video, and return to the pika in the future. And yeah, I named this painting Pika Shoe. <laughs> so you see what I did there? Hey, I thought it was funny. Anyway, I'll be working in little layered glaze sections all over this gold shoe, which is a lovely way to make the best of transparent watercolors, since building up translucent glazes really gives a great glow. I started with a light wash of lemon yellow, where I perceive there will be the lightest highlights, since I'll be working subtractively and saving the light paper for highlights only. Totally not planning on any white gouache for this piece, unless something goes really wrong. After the coolest, lightest yellow has been applied in selected areas, I'm going to return with the medium Oriolan yellow and also the even darker and warmer Indian yellow to build up value and warmth. Just be observing and finding the darkest areas and applying my two browns and yellow-brown mixes there. Then I'll just repeat this value build up many times. And in case you're wondering, this does have the same look and colors as a Brunei or a brown value underpainting. Even though this isn't a brown value underpainting, it still looks like one because that's basically the colors we're using. We're going for punched up values. The painting technique for this is going to be a lot of wet on dry with hard edges, though there are going to be a few areas with softened edges created with a damp clean brush. This is definitely a piece with more drawing with a paint and almost no random wet effects because soft bleeds wouldn't look like a polished metal surface. So much of art is just close observation recorded on paper via practiced eye-hand coordination. It's just looking at all those abstract lines and curves that create the look of highlights and shadows and copying them in paint over and over again. If, like me, you find that calming, invigorating, and instructive all at once, then painting is definitely for you. A metallic surface is not animate like a person, or an animal, or even a botanical subject, so in some ways it'll be easier to paint. However, polished metal is rather artificial and inorganic in its shape, shadows, and reflections, so that can be more challenging to paint in other ways because there will be way more sharp values and smooth straight reflection lines that require a more careful, neat touch to paint. Notice how the metal creates so many hard, smooth, and distinct edges in the body of the slipper, not just on the edges. So there's not many soft edges in the form at all, like if it had been made of weathered leather, suede, or velour. And that means there aren't any soft gradients either. There are more sudden, sharp jumps in value instead. So mostly you can see that the color and values are jumping in hard stops from highlight to midtone to shadow values. Don't overdo the values when painting metal, or anything else, really. 
We see tens of thousands of values out in the world, but we limit and simplify to a scale of 10 at most when painting. In real life, all the values are not confusing to our eyes, but in a 2D painting, too many values can just make a subject look muddled, unclear, and less convincing. So stick to just the major values you see, even if it's just four or five total. And once you familiarize yourself with how metal surfaces look and practice painting them a few times, you can make them up in a pinch for other pieces and forms. In fact, I'm making up some of the shapes and lines on the slipper and not just copying the reference fully to save myself some observation time. There's no reason to follow a reference slavishly. As long as you get a particular textural effect right, it can be repeated more randomly, whether it's for grass or fur or dewdrop highlights or reflective metals. Make sure to take the time to even out longer lines in the reflective effects so that they look smooth. If you have jagged, fuzzy lines or lines that are crooked, the metallic effect will start to falter. So you can see me come back time and again in this painting to make sure that my long lines are nice and smooth. And don't hesitate to switch to a stiffer less long and fine tipped brush if your hand gets fatigued. I've noticed that the softer and longer tipped brushes are harder to keep balanced and paint with after a while, whether that's a Billy Shoal type brush or a triangle or wedge brush or any other softer, longer haired brush. So halfway through, I did switch to a stiffer and shorter round brush to rest some of my finger and hand muscles more. And it's up to you how many pencil lines you want in your sketch. I've been doing more lines in my sketches the past year or so, so that patrons can have more lines to use and transfer from my sketch downloads, but I actually personally prefer fewer pencil lines. Too many pencil lines can make something even more confusing and difficult to paint, and that's definitely how I felt about this slipper. So do a more minimal sketch if that suits you for your pieces. And if you're going to be using my own sketch, then you don't have to transfer all the lines. Just transfer the ones that you think you'll need.
I've done about 50% master studies on my channel so I can share old artists, their styles, and some art history. And the remaining 50% of my videos have been my original art. And this piece, I'm glad to say, is one of my originals. Since I'm beginning to exhaust my list of favorite Golden Age illustrators, I've mentioned that my original art videos will increase in number in the future. And I said before that master studies help a person walk in a skilled artist's shoes with that artist's brush and their style. But what are the benefits of original art versus master studies? Well, firstly, original art usually provides more of a brain workout and more of a creative workout because you are coming up with your own subject, your own composition, your own color scheme, and more. So an original artwork is more of a creative and analytical exercise for your brain. And in the end, you can also have more pride in the end result because all the planning and the ideas are your own. And unlike most master studies, original art also helps build your personal art portfolio. Whenever I provide sketch downloads for my original art, patrons can do a personal rendition of it for practice at home, but not for other uses. And what that means is, like other living artists with copyright, only I reserve the right to exhibit or sell my original art and prints of it. But patrons can ask me about specific sketches, because there's plenty of sketches on Patreon that I put up there that I don't care how my patrons use. So if you're confused, just ask. So I got the reference for this gold shoe from a photo I took at the Disney Museum in San Francisco a while back. And if you're a patron, you can check out my deconstruction post of everything I saw in that museum visit. And this shoe was actually a creatively shaped trophy from Japan awarded to Walt Disney. And when I saw how the photo turned out later, I knew I'd want to paint the yummy metal effects in it sometime. <laughs> pretty happy with this golden slipper painting for now, though I'll come back and look at it with fresh eyes when I return to this piece in a week or so. The only fix I can immediately see is that I have to lift and lighten the central shadow on the shoe. And that's because as a form shadow right in the center, it's too dark. The only shadows that should stay that dark are the cast shadows that are being created in the interior of the shoe or the bottom of the shoe. So I'll try to carefully lift and lighten that overly dark central shadow in the future.
Well, Wizard, hope you enjoyed painting a gold slipper in watercolor with me. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my website link, Skillshare, and Patreon page to support my art and art channel below. Thanks for parking your brushes here and wishing you all epic watercolor adventures.